this really, really powerful hurricane in the Southern Caribbean Sea, Hurricane Matthew. A lot of people are going to watch this very closely over the next uh, several days. This, is, this has a chance at affecting the United States uh, by the time we get to mid to late week next week, so it's going to be a little while. You notice it's not moving very fast. In fact, um, it's almost kind of doing a little loop-de-loop, -loop, um, almost kind of a little change in direction. Not long ago, it was actually moving down toward the south, but now you can see it started to make that turn a little bit back toward the north, and that's where really the trend is going to be over the next couple of days, a push toward the north. Um, one really uh, important thing about this storm, actually I'm going to go back to the sa satellite for just a second because I want to point something out. There is a lot of convection on the right side of this storm, kind of on the east side of it, okay? So it's kind of a, a, a right side loaded storm. And that concerns me a lot because um, that's going to put uh, Haiti in big trouble here. This is a country that uh, very often when they get hit with some kind of event like this where you get extremely heavy rain, um, it very often ends up being kind of a mass casualty event. So this is something we've got to watch really closely. Now, I, the cone of uncertainty is basically telling us where could the center of the storm go. It's, it's possible it could be a direct hit in western Haiti. Possible it could be a, a direct hit in Jamaica. But the uh, most likely scenario is that the worst of the winds will probably shoot the gap. Uh, between the two countries, but still, big time problems for eastern Cuba. You've got a lot of terrain there, landslides, mudslides, along with probable wind damage. I mean, I'm not saying the wind isn't going to be bad. It certainly is. And then it kind of sits over the Bahamas for a little bit, uh, while it's possible there that the wind field could expand a little bit, okay? So you see how it's kind of compact over the next couple of days. Once we get into next week, um, things may expand a little bit, and this is probably going to be at least some kind of problem for the southeastern United States. A little bit too early to get into specifics. There's a road that sits on the side of a Bolivian mountain that connects the Amazon rainforest to the capital. It's unpaved. Sound scary yet? Well, I'm just getting started. A single lane for almost 50 miles. No guardrails. Cliffs 1,800 feet straight down. As a driver descends from an elevation of 15,000 feet, to say the least, life-threatening every inch of the way. During the winter rainy season, fog limits visibility, or rain makes the road a mud-slick guessing game. During the summer, rock slides and dust are kicked up by vehicles. This is Youngest Road, or as most call it, Death Road. And the danger has actually made it a tourist attraction, drawing an estimated 25,000 thrill-seekers every year. Once officially christened the world's most dangerous highway, Youngest Road sends 25 to 35 vehicles over the edge each year, killing up to 300 annually. Several years ago, the Bolivian government built an alternative route with many of the conveniences of modern road construction. However, when natural disasters hit, travelers once again are forced to cross their fingers while driving on Death Road. I'm Matt Sampson, The Weather Channel.